Hey, welcome everyone to episode 48 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and this is my co-host Dylan from Galactic Battleground. Howdy. Um, this week, we are going to be talking to PJ, the owner of Space Microscope Studios. PJ has been working on this crazy game. It's called Sword Car, uh, kind of exactly how it sounds. This game is all about driving around with a sword on the top of your car, blowing up other cars, slicing up billionaires, and drifting your way to victory and gore. So here's PJ. How you doing today, man? Not too bad. How y'all doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to get you on here and, and talk about a, a game. Usually we're, we're pretty close to the end of development, but I, I like the idea of talking to a developer kind of in the middle of the process. You're kind of in that like beta build right now, right? Yeah, I'd say like pre-production still pre just about to end end that phase gotcha okay so there's still a little bit of work to be done i played it last night the game is super fun um i definitely see a ton of potential in it and i'm i'm ready to see Thanks. where it goes um so i guess before we jump into everything i just want to say if you like what we're doing yeah. here at indie arcade wave don't forget to subscribe like and share to the channel it means a lot to us um, if you're listening to the podcast or on YouTube. And if you would like to support us on Patreon, it means a ton. It helps us improve the quality of the videos as well as bring on more guests. So let's jump right into PJ. Just introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Uh, yeah, so um, I guess, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm PJ. I'm from Philly. Uh, well, I'm not from there. I'm originally from Minneapolis. Uh, I've been a mainly I was a musician before the pandemic, and then I had been deving for a bit, um, kind of on the side. Uh, now it's a little bit more of my main focus. Uh, um, yeah, I'm, I've mainly been working in in Unity for for a while now, uh, and started started Sword Car in. July of last year, I think. Yeah. So you're coming up on about a year of development at this point. Getting get like what like ten months? Yeah, we're at we're at about ten ten ish months now. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, the first uh I mean I did like uh this other game or I was working on this other game called Space Pups, Pups in Space uh before. Uh <laughs> but you know, it was <laughs> not quite the, uh, not quite exactly, you know, my style. Like I'm a, I'm a metal musician, so uh, yeah. I uh, and, the, and I just been working. I use that to pretty much learn how to do, to do game dev. Yeah. <clears throat> so what was like the transition into Sword Car? And if you could tell us more about Sword Car. Um. I mean, the transition was kind of uh, really quick. I just uh, one day it was some some Wednesday. Uh, just thought I was just having a cigarette and thinking like, "Oh, what if you put a sword on a car?" And then I laughed for to myself for like two days and uh, quickly drew up a prototype. Uh, uh, and then I just sort of started just started sharing gifts on on facebook and insta people really liked it and it just sort of got out of hand um but yeah essentially so it's a uh i like to call it a hack and slash racing game um where you you deal with uh this 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 shadowy evil company called the uh, busy corp and uh yeah i mean i haven't really revealed too much about the narrative or anything yet so uh i i mean it is it's pretty self-explanatory you drift with a sword on a car <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's exactly what it is uh, after playing it th that's the whole idea of the game and the controls are really cool it it feels really natural i only played on the keyboard and you did highly recommend i play with a controller so that is something i still need to do to get a better feel um but i guess um you kind of touched on your early development. Um, what got you into developing games? Like you said, you're a metal musician. I don't feel like this is something that people just like jump into out of random. Um, what made you interested in developing video games? Uh, I've kind of always been since I was a kid. Uh, 
I have always wanted to try and figure it out. I, at one point, I think it was like 11 or 12, like was that uh, Computer USA, if that ages me. Um, uh, and I saw like this dark basic um, sort of dev kit, like it was kind of like a, an engine, you know, it was on some disks. Uh, begged my dad to buy it for me. Um, and then installed it on my computer and never <laughs> touched it because it was too scary. Uh, so it, it took me a while until I started doing a little bit of programming in college. And then, uh, and after that, just sort of working on it really back burner for, for several years. Um, but, I, you know, it's always been what I've wanted to do. Can you tie it to like an individual game, like in, in your history of gaming that like really pushed you to the like, I think making video games would be an awesome path. Like this is just something that I would really enjoy to do as a hobby. Um, it's hard to say a particular game. I mean, like the first two games I really remember when I was like, you know, super, super young would be like Mortal Kombat and Star Fox. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I had, that's kind of like, oh, I, I grew up in the woods. So it was either playing in the woods or playing games. And there's so many that like, you know, I was a big StarCraft player, uh, played a lot of, of Zelda, played a lot of uh, San Francisco Rush. Uh, that's definitely Thing. And then an obvious one, after I built my first PC, I think the first game I played was uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit and uh, Carmageddon on the PC. Yeah, I can definitely see the, the history with car games there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's always been. A, and I mean, Minnesota is kind of a car centric universe. As is, with actually. most of the Midwest, so a lot of classic car collectors around here. I I didn't even really think about that. There's like five or six meetups just in Bloomington. Oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah. No, I mean, me and my friends used to drift around in the snow uh, <laughs> in high school. So like, that's you know, it, <laughs> that was definitely a hobby too. So um, when developing Sword Car, what was like? the main things that you did. I know I know you told me off stream that you made, you dabbled in Blender. So what are the toughest things that you've encountered when developing and like what have you learned and like what tricks would you give new developers in using these two types of software? Um well yeah so I, I started picking up Blender almost exactly a year ago uh, to do Space Pups, Pups in Space. Um, and I mean, that's, it's like, it's, visual art isn't really, really my thing. Uh, I've never been super into it, uh, but I still have like, a, oh, it needs to look like this, so. And I, I wasn't really like into buying sort of assets for for that type of thing because i wanted it to look uh sort of unique um you know you can sort of if you've played enough you can spot an asset flip from a mile away uh i i guess the biggest thing i would say is to just just do it don't be afraid of trying it and sort of starting to like get your models there your your first one is, is going to be terrible. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, there's some, there's some models in sword car right now that I, I definitely need to redo and have, you know, just like in programming, you need to iterate on that. Um, other difficulties. Uh, is definitely uh, the, the, probably the biggest thing that I've, I've, uh, I've sort of tackled in this project is shader programming. Um, it's really, it's really abstract. Uh, 
it, it finally started to click with me when someone told me that you're programming for one pixel. Um, and that's you, that kind of made everything click. Uh, so yeah, uh, 3d math is hard. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not on the programming side of it, and I I don't even know if I want to <laughs> dive into it. it. It sounds like a really interesting thing and a, a good skill to have, but I'm not big on the math side. If you're if you're in the 3D math is is difficult. Um, no math. No math. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan's the artist, so no math on this side of the GBG team. <laughs> All right, um, mentions and we're good. <laughs> yeah, get, get us the right art, and and that's that's what we care about. Um, I guess I'm kind of curious as to what is the scene like in Philly? Um, you said you came from Minnesota and moved out there. Um, I don't know if you were really a part of the indie scene here in Minnesota, but what is it like out in Philly? Do you guys have like discord groups and anything like that? Well, yeah, in, in Minnesota, I was, I went to some glitch events every now and then, uh, especially since I was in the university of Minnesota. Um, uh, out here, uh, so I, yeah, I, I moved to the East Coast about two years ago. I was in New York, um, started kind of like going to events, uh, but I was also like on tour and I was in Europe for a while, so I wasn't even there for the full year. I moved to Philly during the pandemic, so it's been a little bit more difficult to, uh, you know, like network in person. Um, but there was a, a lot of different meetups in New York City, for sure. Uh, and it seemed like there's some around here. There's the Philly IDGA, and then there's uh, Philly Mechanics, uh, Philly Game Mechanics. Um, uh, but yeah, that, and during the development of Sword Car, I got invited to a sort of East Coast group, kind of led by like some of the uh, folks that worked or work or worked at at avalanche new york you know, you had the, the just cause guys um but yeah i mean uh, and, and they've been like super supportive uh and really helpful uh you know with the motivation and and all that type of stuff community's huge um i definitely know that from playing music uh I, uh, yeah, but I mean, I just haven't had enough, enough time. And, you know, now that people are getting vaccinated, um, hopefully, uh, that that'll change. So I want to dive deeper into your game. Um, I know there's just these like weird looking blonde dudes that you run over and then if you hit a car, it blows up. And I think that's really dope. And like, I know you've made like, at least three cars and i want to know like what was your inspiration like i know you have a patreon i want to know like why you decide to make an el camino with you know like what are the weapons like i don't know how far out you can talk about it but i would be really interested in knowing right well i mean I'm kind of just going with the cars that I I was a huge Forza and Gran Turismo player, um, as well as Snow Runner or Mud Runner. Um, uh, not to mention, I just liked cars in general. Uh, so you, you know, I was just picking the cars that I really like, and I you know some cars have like a personality. So it's you know, what do you add? like what weapon would like pair with that. So right now I got like a, a, a sort of like fake, like a Dodge Charger, like old school, like muscle car one with the sword. That's the main sword car that was, that immediately popped into my head when I came up with the idea. Uh, there's a, you know, I had to put, I mean, I'm making a game about drifting. So I put the initial D like AE 86 in there. Um, with 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 two katanas out the back uh because it you know it was that's like the finesse car uh you got to be really good at, at the drifting part to be able to use that one you can't just run straight head into things um yeah uh, 
I just really like the El Camino. Uh, so far, I've been I, I'm trying to figure out all the possibilities. Those are all like fixed weapons. They they essentially go they're they're statically on the car. Whereas I have one uh, the the flail truck, which is based off the old International Scout, which is an old Michigan company. Um, but it has you know a ball and chain out the back. Uh, <laughs> it has been I keep breaking it. It's so finicky. Uh, so that's definitely like one of the things from before. Uh, a challenge uh, is to continue adding more systems, but allow those systems to be flexible enough to handle a bunch of different uh, types of setups. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know exactly where I'm going to stop. It depends on, you know, exactly how hard it is to make that variety. Uh, you know, because that's scope creep, classic coach scope creep. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I plan on there being, it just got to be at least like 10, but you know, maybe that's too ambitious. I mean, you never know. It, it, it could end up being 10. And if you have a little more time to work on the game, then I mean, why, why not add more stuff in there? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess kind of just go into, your influence with music. Like the first thing I noticed, you, you, you gave me the warning. You said there's no audio control in the game. So use your computer to control that. And you jump in and it's just metal, like right away. And it, it, there's a couple songs in there. I think you have like three songs in this build. Um, all the songs are pretty cool. And like, they really do like get you going. Once you start driving it, it builds up that intensity, the, the clash between what's happening on the screen and the music that you're hearing. So talk to me a little bit about your metal influence and how that kind of drove into like being a necessary part of this game. Um, yeah. Uh, well, thanks for that. Uh, those are, those are my bands still so far. Um, although I want to sort of get some other indie bands in there. Um, I mean, you know, it's a, it's kind of like a punk rock game. So, I I, do, I was like, it can't be really scored any other way. Uh, sort of like, um, yeah, I put in like a system that has like that sort of uh, GTA control, so you can change the tracks. Um, and also, like, I was heavily influenced by like Hotline Miami because uh, he's got a bunch of like really cool synth wave and like techno folks on there um but they're like real they do their stuff outside of they're not just video game scoring they're like they're doing their thing uh which i think is really cool to have that kind of collaboration um but i mean you know what i i i i just like i'm gonna make a game that looks like it could be a napalm death like album art so <laughs> uh, it just this sort of like broader aesthetic of of death metal uh, has just been sort of guiding my hand, and it, it also because like metal is so upfront and in your face, I I feel like that helps with that sort of like catchy, intense, um, you know, like kind of never a dull moment uh, style of gameplay that I was that I was intending on going for. You know, this isn't like a puzzle game or a strategy game. Are you uh, planning on going fully indie with this game or are you planning on getting published? Uh, well, you know, uh, it's a, it's a, it is kind of like a tough question because, you know, getting other people involved means that you're beholden to someone. Uh, it's the same in in music and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I definitely have been talking to some folks. So um, yeah, I'll 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 let you guys know uh, when I when I know. <laughs> uh, but it's still it's still so early that like I don't know when it's going to be released or anything like that. You know, uh, some of the things that. So the sort of bedrock of the game is still being defined. Yeah. Yeah, always yeah. a tough question to ask um, at this point in production because you don't really know what direction you're going with the final product and, and where you are right now is it can always change. Um, I mean, I guess 
that kind of wraps up a lot of the questions that we had for you. Um, I guess just shout out social medias, uh, anybody in the scene that's been helping you out, um, maybe some places that other developers that are interested in getting involved um, can get involved. Just let us know about things like that um, to help the community. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can find me on Twitter at Space Microscope. Um, as, as far as like uh, community, um, I mean, you know, go on there and post at, at indie or, you know, hashtag indie devs and whatnot. Um, but also, you know, there's all sorts of YouTube videos of folks that like some of those bigger indie devs that do devlogs, uh, they have open discords and there's a lot of devs in there. Uh, so you can go find them. Um, uh, yeah. And, you know, just never be, you, you, you'll never like get anywhere if you're uh, not telling anybody about what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm hearing, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to promote. Yeah. Um, there are plenty of people out there. I mean, we're just a small portion of the people that are trying to help the dev scene and kind of get the word out about these games and help people get into it. I mean, it's such a big community. It's such a big potential to create a career out of it. And we just want to help people get started. The, the hardest part is always starting. We've, we've had right. multiple developers tell us that. So um, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much everything from us. I just want to remind anybody that's watching, if you like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like videos. Um, and that Patreon is open. If you want to support us, we really appreciate it. Um, it'll just continue to improve our guests as well as our production here. Um, and until oh, it's next gonna, time, it's going to improve me. Yeah, it's oh, well. Tight. How is it? Has it improved me yet? <laughs> <laughs> it'll it'll help get the word out about you too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just want to thank you again, PJ, for coming on. Um, it was great talking about Sword Car. And Thanks for having me. Until next time, peace. Cheers. Peace.